In this video, we're going to talk about how to value a firm using multiples. So previously, we talked about the dividend discount model and how we can view the firm as a stream of dividends that we can discount back to the present. We also talked about the total payout model, where we say we're going to focus on dividends and share repurchases, all distributions to equity holders. And then we said, well, look, we can actually not even look at dividends, not even look at share repurchases, and just focus on free cash flow. We can just use this discounted free cash flow model, and that's not even affected by firms' borrowing choices and so forth. But all of these methods here have in common that in some way they're dependent on the firm's future cash flows. Whether it be dividends, repurchases, free cash flow, they're all basically some form of cash flow that we're trying to discount back to the present. And so for certain firms, there might be an issue where maybe we have a hard time estimating cash flows, or maybe we just want something a little bit easier than using these methods. And what we can do is we can use a multiple, like for example, the price to earnings ratio, and we could take a comparable firm, and call that a comp, comparable firm, that we assume, say, we say, look, this other firm, so we're trying to value firm one, and we say firm two is a comp, in the sense that it has an identical value. Maybe it's a, an a identical type of firm, they operate in the same industry. If we know their value, if we know the value of this comp and it's identical, then we can say we know the value of this one over here. Even though we didn't have a price, we can impute the price or the value from the comp to the price of the firm that we're trying to value. Now you might say, hey, wait a minute, there's no two firms that are going to be identical, right? They're not going to be exactly alike, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't exist, right? We wouldn't have two firms that are exactly identical. So what they can do is say, well, look, we're going to use some kind of multiple that tries to factor in uh, size differences or something like that, right? We're going to take the price and scale up by earnings, or maybe we have like an enterprise value multiple where we're trying to take into consideration leverage, firms borrowing decisions. We can talk about those different things, uh, but basically we're just going to try and use that multiple to value the firm instead of having to rely on, on cash flows. And we'll talk about the disadvantages and advantages of that uh, toward the end of the video. But let's get into this. So let's say you've got WhizBang Technologies. They're going public. So because they're not publicly traded yet, we don't have like a stock price or something that we look at. We're trying to estimate that. We want to estimate WhizBang's value so that we know what, what's a good price to pay for it. And all we know right now is WizBang's earnings per share is $1.57, all right? So they're earning $1.57 a share. But hey, great thing is that we've got this humdrum industries. This is going to be our comp. This is a comparable firm. We say, you know what, they're, they have a lot, this humdrum industries has a lot in common with WizBang, and so we can use them as a comparable firm, as a benchmark, to estimate the price for WizBank. And we do know the share price of Humdrum. It's $30.94 a share. And we also know their earnings. And their earnings per share is $2.38 a share. So now we can calculate their PE ratio. So let's calculate that. So we've got the PE ratio here. It's going to be the $30.94 divided by $2.38, and that's going to give us 13. So that's our price to earnings ratio for Humdrum, right? Now, let's come up to WizBang. With WizBang, if we were to say, well, they should have the same PE ratio, well, we don't know WizBang's price right here, right? We don't know that part, so we'll leave that blank for right now, but we do know the denominator. We do know earnings. Right, so we've got this dollar fifty-seven in the denominator, right? So we know that this price-earnings ratio, assuming that this is a valid comp, this Humdrum Industries, we can just plug in this thirteen right here. Okay, so now all we have to do, so here we'll just say cross this out. So just think of this as algebra. Now we've got thirteen is equal to some blank number here, our price, here I'll just put price, this is our share price, right? so share price, over $1.57, right? So what do we do? We just multiply each side by $1.57, okay? We multiply that by $1.57, so we take this $1.57 times 13. So 13 
times $1.57 equals $20.41. And $20.41 is our share price. So all we did is we take the multiple that we got from Humdrum, right? Humdrum gave us this multiple of 13. So the price to earnings ratio should be 13. Basically, think of it like this, this price to earnings ratio. Basically, a dollar of earnings is being valued at $13 in this particular industry. And so we're saying, okay, well, WizBang has a dollar fifty-seven in earnings per share, right? So we'll just multiply that by the price to earnings multiple of 13, and that gives us this $20.41 a share. So that's WizBang's price right here. Now, there's some problems with this, okay? So one problem with this is that we haven't taken into consideration any growth options. WizBang might have a lot more growth options than Humdrum. Maybe Humdrum's been in the industry a long time. They don't really have a lot of great projects on the horizon. But WizBang, they've got some new patents or technology, and they're rearing to go. They're going to they're, they're gonna have a lot more growth than Humdrum Industries. And so this price to earnings ratio isn't really taking into consideration. It might actually be that the better you know, PE ratio for WizBang is something higher than 13, right? Maybe investors are willing to pay $19 per, per uh, dollar of earnings for WizBang because of those growth options. And also the firms might have different leverage, right? When we did free, uh, free cash flow, we did discount a free cash flow model, we're looking at, we're, we're basically factoring out firms borrowing decisions. But here we're not doing any of that at all. These firms might have a lot different leverage and just looking at this multiple isn't going to necessarily tell us anything. Now what we could do, we could look at the enterprise value multiple or some, instead of the PE ratio. And in that case, now we're factoring in firms borrowing and leverage decisions. So we might have to use a different type of multiple if there's a lot of differences in leverage between the two firms. And a and really important factor is as well is that it's really difficult to look at two different firms and assume that they have the exact same risk. Just because they operate in a similar industry or so forth, they might have very, very different risk. And we're not taking that into consideration, whether we use the EV multiple or the price to earnings multiple. There's really something difficult to control for. And when we use this multiple valuation, we're not really capturing any differences in risk. So you might be wondering, why does anybody use uh, multiple valuation? Why are we using PE uh, ratios or, or EV multiples to value firms? Why are we doing any of this? Well, one thing to know is it's, it's based on actual prices, right? So when we, took, when we took over here, when we look at Humdrum Industries, we're actually looking at their share price, right? We're benchmark, benchmarking and, and using an actual share price to come up with a share price for WizBank. And in matter of fact, we don't just have to use just one firm as the comp. We could have comp two, we could have comp three, depends how many firms we think are comparable. And we could take the average, right? We could take the average PE ratio of firm one, two, and three, if we think they're all comparable, and then use that instead of this 13. So we're using actual share prices, right? That the investors are paying and so forth for these other firms to benchmark and come up with a price instead of just saying, oh, we've got some pie in the sky, uh, dividends or something that we think are going to happen for whiz bang at some point in the future. But probably the reason that most people like multiple valuation or using comps is ease of use. It's just it's just really easy to just say, you know what, this firm over here, they've got a PE ratio of 13 and this firm is very similar. So we think that, you know, they got X amount of earnings per share. We'll just multiply it by the PE ratio and that gives us a rough idea of what that firm should be 